the Talos Principle. Right, how to describe this game? Talos Principle is a first-person puzzle game, and when you think of first-person puzzle games, you think of games like Portal, you think of games like, you know, lesser-known ones like maybe Antichamber or Quantum Conundrum. So this game is made by Crow Team, who made games like Serious Sam. That's right, this game is made by the same group of people who brought you this. <laughs> Gotta be more careful. You'll put an eye out. Now, while Serious Sam is definitely big and dumb and full of blood and explosions and all that fun stuff, the Talos Principle could not be more far removed from that. Okay, so like Portal is funny. It's like goofy kind of sci-fi this game is introspective it's it's mysterious it's very thought-provoking this is a game where you play as an android and you're wandering th around through these like really beautiful gorgeous worlds with like trees and beautiful buildings and beautiful like skies and sunsets and all that stuff and you're wandering around and you're solving these puzzles and this voice who calls himself Elohim, he's basically like the voice of God in this game. Here's a quick example of what he sounds like. You walk now upon the stones of my temple, whence many gates lead. And know that I have other temples, for my garden is greater than your eye can encompass. And all these worlds I made for you. Gee, thanks, buddy. And so when you start this game, you you know that you're an android because you can just, like, switch the camera to third person and you can actually, like, see your character. And actually, you can play the entire game in third person. You don't have to play in first person. But, like, you don't know anything about, like, the world around you or, like, why it is the way it is or why you're solving all these puzzles. But the puzzles themselves are well made. And so you're naturally like, okay, let's, you know, let's go along with it. And then you run into these computer terminals and these computer terminals give you, like, some backstory as to what's going on. I mean, they give you some backstory, but you have to fill in a lot of holes in your head. And actually, that's a really great way to tell a story, I think, in a video game. Like, it doesn't all have to be cutscenes. It doesn't all have to be, like, the game just telling you everything that's happening. I mean, you really have to just kind of figure everything out on your own. But you meet this character in the computer terminals who calls himself the Milton Library Assistant. This guy is a total dick. A total dick. And he keeps on asking you all these tough questions about, like, who are you and what does it mean to be human and what does it mean to be machine and all these like deep philosophical questions and you just want to punch this guy in the face i mean it's it's not an actual person it's just like an ai or at least you think it is again left open to interpretation but yeah he asks you all these difficult philosophical questions and you answer one way and then he like responds back with some like snappy like sarcastic comeback and you're like no no, no i want to back up and say something else but then he's like no we'll talk later and you're like damn it come back here but essentially what i'm getting at is that the storyline of this game is not like a storyline in a traditional game where there's like a clear there's no clear goal at least at first like the game doesn't say this is what you have to do i mean you'll naturally figure out that what you have to do is get all the puzzle pieces in the game and these puzzle pieces are basically like they look like tetris pieces or tetrominoes i'm just going to call them tetris pieces from now on and they come in three flavors green yellow and red actually no there's more than three flavors but most of the puzzles in the game are going to be green yellow or red which basically translates to easy normal and hard green is easy yellow is normal red is hard and what's awesome about the puzzle progression in this game is that once you collect enough of the green puzzle pieces which there aren't that many the game opens up so that you can actually like go to later puzzles in the game if you're feeling up to the challenge and that's awesome because it makes it feel less linear it's not like you don't feel like you have to complete the puzzles in room one, then the puzzles in room two, then the puzzles in room three. It's like, no, just bounce around and do whatever you want. I mean, it's it's just nice to be open-ended like that. All right, so how do these puzzles work exactly? So the game has these hub worlds, and in a hub world, it will say where each puzzle piece is. And they're basically like in these locked off areas, and that is like the puzzle area. And it'll say which Tetris piece that you will get for completing the puzzle and any necessary items that you need. So let's run through the list of items really quick in this game. One of the first ones that you run into this game is called the Jammer. It's basically like this little light on a little yellow tripod. And what you do is you shine it at a uh, like a blue door and it jams the door. So basically like opens it for you. And once the Jammer is like on that door, you have to keep it set there. You can't like carry it with you. Like it doesn't permanently open the door. It just keeps the door open as long as the jammer is jamming it. And you'll also use the jammer 
to disable these like floating mines that'll kill you if you get too close. There's also turrets that'll kill you if you even enter their line of sight, and you can use the jammer to jam those as well. And what puzzle game wouldn't be complete without a block? Yes, the old block. Every puzzle game has to have blocks which you push on switches to open doors, and this game is not above all that. But the one item that you will get in this game that the game gets the most mileage out of is the connector. So the connector is basically like a crystal that's sitting on a tripod, and it looks a lot like a jammer as far as like, you know, it's a tripod and whatever, but like what it does is it connects a laser from wherever the laser starts in a wall to where it ends. And where it ends is always like right next to a door. So like you just have to get the laser going at a certain angle in order to unlock a door, unlock a door or like turn on a switch, which turns on something else, you know, something like that. There's also fans, which you'll have installed in the ground. And when they're turned on, they will obviously elevate anything that you put on them. And it could be like yourself in order to get over a ledge, or it could be like a block to like move it up or to like launch it over a wall if the fan is angled in such a way but the trickiest item to use in this game is called the recorder and it's like this little console that's sitting on this post and what you do is basically like you hit record and then you perform a certain number of actions and then you go back to the recorder and hit stop and then you hit play and then you'll see like a ghostly version of yourself doing everything that you just did. And part of the puzzle is like figuring out how to work together with like your past self in order to like get over a certain ledge. Like your past self will like hold something over his head, which is a platform. And then you find a certain way to like get up to like stand on top of that platform and like have him move to like another ledge or something like that. I mean, it's kind of hard to explain. I mean, I don't want to like give away the solutions to any puzzles, but this is, these are just like the basic ways of using them. But enough talk about that. Like what makes the puzzles so good like why are the puzzles in this game so interesting are they even interesting yes they're interesting they're very good also there's a lot of puzzles before i talk about what makes the puzzles so great there are a lot of puzzles in this game a lot of puzzles a lot and this isn't something like super mario 64 where there's like 120 stars in the game but you only need 70 to beat the game no you need to collect all the puzzle pieces to get to one of the endings in this game. Hold on, I take that back. So there are three endings to this game. Two of the endings will be accessible to you once you collect all of the red Tetris pieces. And the other one will be opened up to you if you collect like all the really secret hard puzzles, which I didn't do because they're hard. It took me 28 hours to beat this game. A puzzle game. A puzzle game. And I'm pretty good at puzzle games. It took me 28 hours. The game does have these in-game hints that you can use, but what's cool about it is that like you have to find them and the game doesn't like tell you where they are, but you can like find them pretty easily if you like explore the hub areas enough. And with all the puzzles in this game, with all the hard puzzles, you're like, oh man, I need as many hints as possible. The game gives you three. Well, it doesn't give you three. It's like you have to find the three hints separately, if that makes any sense. But it's like there would be so many puzzles that, like later on in this game where you're going to be like, I need a hint. The game only gives you three, though. Better use them wisely. You only get three. Yes, you can go online. Yes, you can look at walkthroughs. Yes, you can look at guides and, you know, hints and tips and like all these walkthroughs to help you get through to the end. But trust me, th this is one of those games. It's like Braid it's, or like Shadow of the Colossus. It's like one of those puzzle games where it's like you have to figure stuff out. It's going to be so much more satisfying when you figure stuff out. Trust me. Having said that, there's one puzzle at the very end of the game called Crisscross Conundrum Advanced. I'm not a fan of this puzzle. This puzzle and I do not get along. I, I could not figure it out. I could not figure out this puzzle. It is like... Ugh. I have to say, one thing that this game does amazingly well, and I don't know how they do this, but there are these puzzles in this game where, like, you'll get to the puzzle, you will start to figure out how to get to the end, you will go through step one, step two, step three, and then you'll get to, like, the last step required in order to actually, like, get to the end of the puzzle, but you'll be, like, one item short. You'll be like, wait, I need one more connector in order to connect the laser to this part in order to get, finish the puzzle. Maybe I just didn't see the connector. But you're like, no, there, there, there are only three connectors in this one puzzle, and I need four. Yeah, I need four. And you'll be working at this puzzle, and you'll think, okay, wait, I know where all the items are. I know where the exit is. I just have to figure out how do I use the items in order to get to the exit? I just, I can't. I can't figure it out. And that's exactly what Crisscross Conundrum Advanced was with for, me, for me. Like, I kept coming back to this puzzle, and I'm like, I cannot figure this out. I cannot. Now, with many other puzzles in the game, 
I was able to figure it out. And the way you figure it out is like you, you mess around with it for like 15, 20 minutes, get stuck, leave, and then come back like the next day or two days from now. And you'll enter the puzzle and you'll solve it in like 10 minutes. And you're like, didn't I, I got, I got stuck on that puzzle. How did I, I was stuck for like a half an hour. How did I solve it so fast? I don't know. There's something going on in the human brain where you're like solving it in your unconscious. I don't know. All right. So you start in this temple and once you collect enough puzzle pieces, you unlock an elevator and then an elevator leads you to like this hub world where there are these other temples. And right in the middle of this area is a giant tower. And you're like, what is that? This tower is like going all the way up into the sky and there's like lightning and thunder and clouds and you're like, what, 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 what's up there? And then Elohim with this booming voice is like, You must not ascend the great tower for it shall bring death and the end of your generations. Oh, guess it's back to solving puzzles for me. Just gonna go over here and do some puzzles. All right, so you're collecting all the green Tetris pieces. You're collecting all the yellow Tetris pieces. And then you collect all these red ones. But like, you can't find like where you're supposed to use these red Tetris pieces. And there's so many of them. You're like, what am I supposed to do? And then you find this giant door and Elohim speaks to you. And he's like, if you solve all of my tribals, you will enter eternal life. And you're like, sweet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that and then you finally get all the puzzle pieces and then the door opens and you're like there it is there's the end of the game there's eternal life but that tower that tower is still there and i haven't explored it yet that's actually one of the coolest moments that i played in a video game in a while is like the first time you see that tower you're like sweet i'm gonna go up to the tower and then elohim's like you cannot go to the tower or you will die i'm like oh oh um, I'm sorry. And like, as you're solving the rest of the puzzles in this game, you're like, what is in that tower? It's like, it teases you. It's like, here's this mysterious, interesting looking thing. Just don't go in it. It's like saying, don't think about elephants. Oh, oops. There you go. This game looks gorgeous, by the way. And what's amazing is that like, it makes it feel full of life, even though there's like no other life forms in there. Like you hear birds chirping and wind blowing and all that stuff. But like, you're basically just by yourself as an android solving these puzzles. But like the music is very soothing. Like the music has like this Gregorian chant thing going on. It's very soothing and calming. And it's like, it helps the presentation a lot. In conclusion, if you have a decent PC and if you're a fan of puzzle games, the Talos Principle should absolutely be at the top of your list of things to play. Whether you play it now, whether you play it later, whether you add it to your backlog, at some point, make sure that you play this game. And like any great puzzle game, there are times where you're going to feel like a genius and there's going to be times where you feel like the stupidest human being to ever walk the face of the earth and sometimes that'll happen in the same puzzle you'll feel dumb as crap because you'll be like i know where all the items are i know where the end is i cannot figure it out and you'll like sort of retrace your steps in the puzzle like okay wait i do this i do this wait if i what if i move this over here and then that leads to the solution and you're like oh that's how you solve that crisscross puzzle well played crow team well played. Alrighty, I will see you guys next time for my next video review. It'll be either Evolve or The Order 1886, uh, but until then, feel free to browse my channel and look at my other video reviews. Thank you all for watching!